What's the word, y'all? I know the timing of this video being out is probably terrible. Y'all used to these videos being out in the morning, but I got to do what I got to do. Because I just figured that the people that watch this channel are watching basketball, so don't drop a video during basketball. Are you really going to click off watching your favorite team to watch this video? If you said yes to that question, I appreciate you. Leave a like. No, but for real, this morning I got hit up a bunch about the Ringer's top 25 players in the NBA list. A lot of people are like, Kenny, we want your reactions. Kenny, we want to hear what you think. So I'm here to give y'all what y'all want. But first, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about the idea of ranking players. Because when I first started doing this YouTube thing and I was trying to make a name for myself, I was one of those people that love ranking players. I need to rank all 30 point guards through centers and I need to, I need to do it efficiently and I need to argue about things. I got a player as the third best point guard. You got him at number four? Oh, we got to argue. We got to fight to the death because I must be right. You must be wrong. Obviously, that's not a great way of thinking. And I've grown since then. That was like 2016, 2017, Kenny Beecham. And, and things have changed. After 2016, 2017, Kenny Beecham, there's a, a version of Kenny Beecham that was completely against ranking players. Like, I had the mindset that there was nothing positive that could come out of ranking players. And now... I like somewhere in the, in the middle, man. I can enjoy a nice little ranking as long as everybody associated can agree that you shouldn't take it too seriously, right? We should never be taking these little opinion-based things too seriously. And as long as you have that response or that belief, we can rate players all day, baby. You know what I'm saying? I can admit when I'm wrong, you can admit when you're wrong, and we can ex respect each other's opinions. As long as you have that mindset, ranking is no wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. But in NBA fan culture, there's still that subgenre that was like me back in 2016, who was like, I need to rank this player as the best at his position. And if you don't got him at number one and you got my number two as your number one, I need to bash your number two. And I need to hate your number two because my number one has to be number one. I have never been a guy that has been completely married to his opinions. I am always evolving. My ideas are always evolving. And as long as you live in that that little portion of, of life, we can be homies, man, for real. We can, we can talk basketball all day, every day. Anyway, um, this is something I've thought about recently, and I've been wanting to talk about this on the channel for a while. So shout out to The Ringer for giving me a reason to talk about this. And I don't think this is a necessarily unique idea. There's probably a million of sports fans that do this. But I'm done ranking players and saying, this person's one, and this person's two, and this person's three. I'm doing it at range. So, for example, if you were talking about all time, if you, you ask somebody who is the greatest basketball player of all time, you're going to get some people to say LeBron, you're going to get some people to say Jordan, but those are like the two people. Those two people are getting like 98% of the votes, right? So, in my mind, Jordan is either one or two, so his range is one or two. LeBron is either one or two, so his range is one or two. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar might be number three, or he might be number four or number five, so his range is three through five. That's, this is not my official list, but you get what I'm saying. Because there are so many different factors that can go into ranking players, it is impossible for us to really get down to a consensus. So how about we start doing it in ranges? Situation, teammates, coaching, role, all of these things are so very important to ranking players. I'm sure there are so many players in the league that if he got more opportunity or this person was given the keys, they would put up some really good stats to make them look like one of the top 25 players in the league. But that's just not the case. That's just not the way it goes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Ringer article. I'm going to give my opinions. You might disagree. That's okay as long as we can agree that at the end of the day, it is just basketball and everybody here is an enjoyer of basketball. Hey, shout out to Kevin Durant, by the way. He um In his post-game interview, he was talking about how like some people in the fans that be hackling, heckling? Heckling is a word. Heckling NBA players don't really enjoy the game of basketball, and he's 100% right. I, I legitimately know people that call themselves basketball fans or NBA fans that don't actually enjoy the game of basketball, but they just like to, to talk about it, which is weird to me. We all enjoy the game. Let's get to the list. Here we go. The top 25 players in the NBA in 2021-2022. Um, I, I'm guessing that this just means that we are not looking at resumes. We're looking at this season and ranking players as such. And if that's the case, I'm very curious to how they rank certain players because I feel like some players are legacy players. It's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but they get ranked higher on lists, um, not based off their current productivity, but what they've done in recent years. So we, we, we'll see. And this is not just one person. This is the entire or not the entire. Down here, it says Dan Devine, Zach Cram, Rob Mahoney, J. Kyle Mann, Kevin O'Connor and Jonathan Sharks. Well, I don't know everybody in there. I know a good chunk of these people. Kevin O'Connor is even the homie. I will say that we, if you have my phone number, we text him. You the homie. Um, so, and I respect a lot of these people's opinions, so I, that makes me more intrigued about the list. And they give you some notes to start off with, and we have to go through these. Uh, so, honorable mentions include DeJounte Murray, Chris Middleton, Bam Adebayo, Evan Mobley being in here is actually interesting, man. This is a rookie. 
No other rookies on here, right? Yeah, no other rookies on here. But Evan Mobley's here. That just lets you know how good of a rookie season he, he's having. And I, I like the way Kay Cunningham – oh, this might be a long video, by the way, because I'm going to talk talking my ass off. I like the way uh, Kay Cunningham said recently that at the end of the day, rookie of the year is just a trophy. And that's 100% the case, and I've been telling people that for the for a very, very long time. But Evan Mobley being an honorable mention on top 25 players in the league at the age of 20 or something like that is elite. Paul George, LaMelo Ball, Darius Garland didn't make the list. But I don't see Jared Allen. Huh. Okay, Jared Allen might be on the list and no Darius Garland. We'll talk about that. Kyrie Irving didn't make it. I would guess that it has a lot to do with him um, playing like seven, uh, about 20 games at this point. But Kel Bridges, Pascal Siakam, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Damian Lillard. Dame has missed so much time in the season. Same thing with like Paul George. It makes sense why they probably won't be on this list. Pascal Siakam, I think, has a conversation to be top 25. This might be his best season. Um, of his career, even though he's been an all-star a couple times, this might be his legit best season. The players who fell out of the 25, Adebayo, George Irvin, man, this is kind of crazy. Lillard, Julius Randle, 100% deserves, <laughs> doesn't deserve to be anywhere near a top 25 list again, but what a crazy season that was last year. Hopefully, eventually he get, gets back to that place. Bradley Beal, Zion, who hasn't played this season, Kawhi, who hasn't played this season, who he was six last year, Damian Lillard was number 11, he completely fell off, yada, yada, yada. The widest range of ranking amongst individual voters by far belonged to James Harden, who was ranked as high as 10 and as low as 25. Listen, I understand. I don't know. Maybe I'm becoming the person I didn't want to. I was going to say I understand how this season hasn't been necessarily a great season for James Harden. But in the last two to three weeks of the trading line, we kind of see that he, he is still probably top 10 in the league. Um, But again, if we go on the whole season, you got to take into consideration the Brooklyn thing. You have to. So, I mean, still 25 even feels low if if it was just a Brooklyn thing. 25 still feels low, but uh, it's not my list. And then Draymond Green was ranked as high as 13 on some people's list and completely off the list for others. All right. Without further ado, here are the top 25 players this season. Keep, keep that in mind as we go through this. Number 25, Jalen Brown. Okay, I don't hate this. I, like I said, if we're going by range, I would say 25 might be... The floor of, and again, I'm not making my own list right now, so take it with a grain of salt, but 25 feels like around the floor I would have Jalen Brown, so if that's the case, I don't hate this ranking for him at all. He's got his counting stats. Last year, he wasn't ranked, and he was an all-star last season, but with Kawhi Leonard being out, Damian Lillard being out, Paul George being out, Zion being out, Julius Randle falling out, Kyrie Irving falling out, some people are going to come up, and that's going to be Jalen Brown, even though, he, again, he wasn't an all-star this year. He had a 50. I forgot he had a 50 this season. That was, a, that was a really, really good game, wasn't it? Okay, number 24 is Fred Van Vliet. It's so cool to see Freddie Magic on this. And I know Freddie Magic is not really his nickname. It's actually a rapper that I listen to. Regardless, um, having Fred Van Vliet on this list is great considering, you know, his upbringing being f from the area that I'm from, area kind of uh, in Rockford, and I'm here in Chicago. And I was pushing I was pushing a Fred Van Vliet bandwagon for some time. I guess they kind of figured that, hey, Pascal's not going to be here. So we're going to have Freddie be here, right? It would feel weird for the Raptors to have two top 25 players and be a playing team, right? So they pick Freddie, and I'm not mad at that. I, I don't know what all went into making their list, and I guess I could probably read this and then give you the reason why player X is here. And I probably will read it after the video, but again, we're taking things at face value at the moment. Number 23 is Anthony Davis, and last year he was ranked as high as number 9. And so far, based on the list, this this has been the player that I think has probably the highest range between where he is and where he could be. Because I think a lot of people, majority of people, acknowledge how great of a player Anthony Davis can be. But it's like, how often can we get that version of Anthony Davis? A, he's always dealing with injuries. And B, he just, he just be having some nights where he just don't bring us all. I just remember earlier, like four, th three, four seasons ago, it was like the conversation, who will end up being better, Anthony Davis and Giannis, and Giannis took that and he just ex excelled, while Anthony Davis, of course, hasn't been bad, he's still on the top 25 list, he should be in the same conversation with, with Giannis based on his talent level. He just hasn't been able to A, stay healthy and put it together night in and night out. I had, I saw this conversation the other day. Uh, they were talking about Giannis and what makes Giannis different than other players around the league and league history is that it don't matter if it's game 40 of the season, game number one, or game number 82. He's going out there and playing like it's his very last, and you don't have that same kind of urge with Anthony Davis night in and night out. If Anthony Davis played with that same kind of urge, I mean, there, there won't be many players in the league better than him. 
You know, there won't be many people in the league better than him. And it doesn't help for his sake that this season he started off where he could not hit his jump shots. And, of course, Anthony Davis being more of a finesse big than a power big because he can't stay stay uh, healthy, him not being able to hit that long two or hit any of his threes really hurt his efficiency and stuff. But I would say this season defensively he, he feels like – Maybe not the best he's ever been, but up there in his some of his best seasons. He just hasn't been able to get on the court. 22 is Zach Levine. I'm happy to see Zach Levine here. Um, I, I was curious whether or not he would make it. Now, this has been a, a difficult season for Zach, of course, even though he's still averaging about 25 points per game. We'll round up for you, Zach. 25 points per game, 5-5. Five and five, let's, let's just say that. This, as a, as a guy that's been watching Zach Levine for the last couple seasons, this season's not nearly as great as, as last season. But again, with the team's success, you, you kind of narrow in on Zach Levine a little bit more. And it has to do with him de dealing with a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of nagging injuries. If you're not attuned with the, in tune with the Chicago Bulls, you would think that Zach Levine's playing healthy every night. Absolutely. Absolutely not. The man's thumb, or was it pinky? One of his fing, pink, uh, fingers on his hand has been messed up since the very start of the season. He's dealt with knee stuff, and he's trying to play through it because he wants to be the team leader and team captain, but it definitely has hurt him a decent amount um, when it comes to getting to the basket. He hasn't got to the basket nearly as much as his previous seasons, and you could tell it's probably because, A, he don't get the calls that he probably deserved to get as a, as a really good player that draws a lot of contact, but B, it's just probably not good for his body at this point. He's banged up. But it's cool to see him here because I think this is what he, you know, can be. Um, and I'm, I'm happy he's here. he's here. 21 is the fro. Like I said, I think they had to pick between Jared Allen and Darius Garland. And listen, I, I guess that there's a real conversation between both of them, right? Um, nobody protects the paint literally based on statistics better than Jared Allen in the entire league. He is as versatile as a get as that center position on defensive side of the ball. So I understand why he's here. He's a cr crazy vertical threat, and he can legitimately be the defense, right? But I think on the opposite side of that, you can make an argument that Darius Garland can be the offense and has been the offense. You just saw him drop a career high the other day without Jared Allen being there because they needed him to do those things. I'm not saying I disagree, but I'm saying that if this was Darius Garland and not Jared Allen, if it was interchangeable, I don't think people would be upset. I don't think people would be upset. But shout out to Jared Allen. Love to see him here. Number 20, Drew Holiday. I was listening to Zach Lowe's podcast, and he was mentioning how he, he thinks that Drew Holiday hasn't been the same defensive player this year as he's been in previous seasons. And maybe that's the truth. Maybe that's uh, championship fatigue. I believe that in the playoffs come around, this, this one dude out won't guard me. <laughs> and he has been a guy that has consistently, and, and, and consistently just been a fourth-quarter guy. Just, I think it was three games in a row. Bro came out and had double-digit points in the fourth quarter. He did it against the Bulls. He did it against the Suns the other night. He, he's doing this very, very regularly, and he might not be the elite of the elite defensive like he was last year during the regular season, but again, his defense is still up there. I like Drew Holiday being here. Um, do I like him being higher than Zach Levine, or do I like him being higher than AD or even Jalen Brown? I, I, I don't know. I don't know, especially if you subscribe to the idea that, that Drew Holiday hasn't been as great defensively as last year. But Drew Holiday being here, shout out to him. Shout out to him. Next, Draymond Green. Okay, so this is interesting. That Draymond Green did make the list at number 19. Again, they said that somebody had him at 13 and somebody had him off the list completely. I, I mentioned this in the video just a couple days ago. His 8-8-8 eight, eight, and eight, whatever um, does not jump off the page at all. But there's a reason why they're like 20-something and 15 with Draymond is there. I'm Maybe I'm off a little bit. And 15 and 14 and 15 with Draymond is not there. I'm not hearing no more Draymond Green slander. But I will say this might be... Like, you know how we talked about the floor for Jalen Brown? This seems around the ceiling for Draymond Green, which is not a bad thing. James Harden at 18. Again, they're taking the averages. Somebody had him at number 10. Somebody had him at number 25. So he ends up at number 18. And this is I, – I don't agree with this at all. I, I, the guy that had him at 25, again – I can understand if you're taking into consideration the Brooklyn Nets thing and, and, and that being the majority of his season for sure. Um, but him dropping all the way down here just feels feels wrong. It just feels wrong because James Harden has looked like James Harden um, since he's got traded, since he's been in a healthy mindset. Um, so, yes, this is below the floor. This is the lowest I've seen James Harden be. Again, I don't, they don't tell. They're not going to give you the balance, y'all. They're not going to give you the balance and say, hey, it was uh, it was O'Connor. They had him at 25. I don't think it would be Kevin to do that. But somebody had him at 25 and the average out to 18. He's better than that, for sure. Yeah, I've been I've been the king of Rudy Gobert fandom. That's for, that's for sure. For as, as long as Rudy Gobert has been a starter sitting in the league, I've been behind Rudy Gobert. I cannot have him higher than James Harden, even though – he might be the greatest rim-protecting center in the last 10 years, 15 years. 
I still can't have him higher than James Harden simply for the fact that I know he's averaging like career numbers at around 16 points per game, but you can't give that boy the ball and say, get us a bucket in the paint. Don't matter who's guarding him. Um, so I can't, I can't have him this high. I love Rudy. Love Rudy for sure. Cannot have him this high. Not, I mean, at least if I'm comparing it to the guy that's right below him. You know what I'm saying? Next, we have Carl Anthony Towns. He was number 25 last season. And you know what's crazy? These stats are eerily similar to his previous year stats. The only thing that's been uh, different is his net rating. He's got good teammates around him. He's got the, he, they've built a good team. They have good chemistry. They have uh, good locker room leaders. And like Patrick Beverly is getting people to, to get in on the defensive side of the ball. They got, the, they got McDaniels. They got Vanderbilt who fit nicely alongside Cat. So even though he might not be the greatest center in the league or even one of the worst defensive centers in the league, you have the piece around him where you can cover that up. And now you win more games. And just like that, you can you can be number 25 to number 16 just by contributing to winning basketball. So at the car in towns, I like that spot. Trey Young at 15. Last year, he wasn't ranked at all. Um, but I also believe last year he wasn't an all-star, right? I think he was an all-star in the second season, not the third season, but then he made it again in his fourth season. I fumbled over my words like six takes. I don't even know what to really say about Troy Young. I think he's just one of the, the more polarizing players in the NBA, mostly because, A, he's such a defensive liability. He's one of the worst defensive players in the league. And it's not all just based on his size, right? It, there's just clips of him just not giving efforts and getting beat back door. That's like something, even if he was seven feet tall, if you're doing that stuff, you're going to look like a bad defender. Um, but he's such, he's such a one-man show. Again, they're sub-500 right now when it's, like, inexcusable considering they were in the conference finals last year. But he's such a one-man show that, like, I'm not saying that I can excuse his poor defense because, again, one of the reasons why they're not winning in many games is because the defense is trash. And I'm, I'm not saying that Trey Young can be the, the decided factor in the defense being good, but obviously it doesn't help when you have somebody that's out there basically not contributing. Um, and it also doesn't help that a lot of his role players that were elite last year far, as far as that finals run have fallen off a little bit. Clint Capella has fallen off. Kevin Herter has been kind of eh. Um, John Collins has been in, in and out in the lineup. I guess he's been chill, but he what he hasn't been bringing the same defensive um, defensive minded stuff that he was doing in the playoffs last season. DeAndre Hunter was holding Julius Randle to like zero points. I'm exaggerating, but zero ish points and hitting his shots. He hasn't even been stay healthy or even been in a lot of the lineup. So a lot of the players around him kind of shrunk. And because of the team hasn't been successful, but Trey Young is still a dude that's going to get his stats. Regardless if they're a 15-win team or 60-win team, these statistics are something I can I can guarantee for Trey Young over his career. I can't wait to actually read this because they're getting into stats, some second spectrum stuff. I, I don't have second spectrum. I think you have to be like a real employee of somebody and believe it or not. Never mind. Number 14, Donovan Mitchell. Look at that wingspan, man. People don't know this, but Donovan Mitchell is one of the longest wingspans of somebody his size ever. Like, look at he's like he's got the crazy arms. But Donovan Mitchell here, he's got better from last season. I was just list, listening to Ben Taylor's Thinking Basketball podcast. They did an entire episode about Donovan Mitchell and John Morant. And I don't want to reiterate what they said. I really highly recommend listening to their show. Um, but 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 Donovan Mitchell just has been that dude. And though the Jazz might not be as good this season as last season, I am a dude that, that has said many times before, especially with a team like the Jazz, that it is okay to sacrifice some, some overall wins if you're more prepared come playoff time. Because that number one seed hasn't done you any. Anything. The number two C hasn't done you anything. Sure, you want a little bit of an advantage, but if you can rest up a little bit so you can go on a run that you desperately been needing, um, then, then do that. And Donovan Mitchell and company, they, I, I would say there's some pressure on this core for sure. Definitely some pressure. And Donovan Mitchell has to do his thing. Playoffs come around. There's not many people that perform at a higher level than Donovan Mitchell. Next, we have Devin Booker. These two dudes have been compared to each other as long as they've been in the league. And there they are, one spot a difference from each other. Devin Booker's been one of the clutch players in the entire league. Um, and, and I love that he's been showing off his playmaking more and more every single season. And now with Chris Paul being out, we've got Point Booker in the very first game of Point Booker. He had double-digit assists, and then he went out with COVID. But uh, he's coming back. He's coming back tonight against the, the uh, Miami Heat. And this is interesting. Um, uh, man says, is Devin Booker the 13th best player in the, in the world? Probably not. But contributional winning is the bump here. And that's that seems like it's been the case for this entire article. You got Devin Booker, you know, they're winning. And he got bumped. Car Anthony Towns from 25 to 16 on pretty close stats because they're winning. Um, who else was it? Zach Levine wasn't on his list at all, but they're winning. So here he is. Draymond Green wasn't on his list at all, but they're winning. So here he is, you know. So, yes, winning does matter when it comes to ranking players. 12. Oh, I would love to see the ballots. I want to see the ballots now. How low was, was Jason Tatum and how high was Jason Tatum? And you know what? That ballot that I'm thinking of is exactly what, like, my ranking system, right? If player X has Jason Tatum at 15 and somebody has him at 10, then his range is probably 10 to 15 because we have people in between saying he's there. 
but here he is at number 12. I mentioned this on our podcast that the post all-star bump for Jason Tatum has been as real as ever, and it has been real for the past couple seasons. He is just a demon, and I guess it was happening before the all-star break too, where, where the Celtics went on that nine-game winning streak, and we're winning like 14 out of 15, and Jason Tatum has, has improved his efficiency. Basically, the same shots that were not falling before are now falling, and his playmaking has been so much better in just two to three months' time. Him being at number 12, I'm not mad at it at all. This might stir some pots, but I'm not mad at this at all. Jimmy Butler, another polarizing player, another polarizing player, because you will have a game where Jimmy Butler scores 10 points. They'll win the game. But Jimmy Butler will score 10 points, and people will be like, oh, how, how, how will people consider Jimmy Butler the 11th best player in the entire league? Um, contributing to winning matters, being the leader of the, the best team in the league, one of the best teams in the league matters. But I think that the Jimmy Butler contribution is a lot deeper than like, oh, he might have ended with 10 points on – Three of 12 shooting tonight. Chris Paul, love to see it. He's better this year than last year, according to their rankings. And again, with people falling down and stuff, it makes sense. I don't really have to talk about Chris Paul. Um, I feel like I've been talking about Chris Paul's contributions to things for in a lifetime as, as he is my favorite player. And I love to see him this high at number 10. Number nine, you got DeMar DeRozan. And this was something I actually knew because some people that sent it to me was like, Kenny, you, you got to talk about how they got DeMar DeRozan at number nine when he averaged a 28 and he's an MVP candidate. And you know what? I'm not mad at it whatsoever, man. I'm not mad at it whatsoever. I think number nine is probably a good slash right spot for DeMar DeRozan. Number eight is Ja Morant. Woo! Young boy. And you're number three. Number eight. Eighth best player in the entire NBA. Wow. What a good story this is, man. Mid-major dude comes in draft a second overall to a small market team and got got that small market team everywhere watch next season they about to get all the nasty televised games similarly you remember the knicks didn't have a lot of nasty televised games last season and they were good and the uh people caught on the nba caught on like oh let's get the knicks more games they're one of the biggest markets and they're gonna be good again and now they're not good i think they're gonna do the same thing next season where they just give the memphis grizzlies all of the games that the knicks got um, because they should be good again next season. John Moran being the eighth best player in the entire NBA is not something I can argue at all. Um, he's a highlight reel. He's been one of the better leaders in the entire league. I know there's an argument that says that, hey, um, I, oh, there was actually an executive, um, an anonymous executive, because they're always anonymous, that said if you switch John Moran to Shea Gilles Alexander, the same things will be happening. Love Shea, for sure. He's one of my favorite players in the league. And, and that anonymous GM might be right. Again, like I said, all of this is very situational based, but I do believe that John Moran is super special. I do believe that John Moran is super special. And this stuff that he's doing right now, I don't think this is an anomaly. I think this is the type of player John Moran is going to be, and he's going to get better with time. John Moran being the number eight, dope. Number seven is Luca. All right. So I personally believe that Luca's range, and I'm being honest here, Luca's range. As ranking the top players in the NBA right now, I think his high would be like four, maybe three, and eight at his at his floor. And him being at seven makes sense. He's a guy, I mean, he came into the season out of shape, and because of that, he didn't look great. The team didn't look great, but now he's in shape. Post-All-Star Luka has been killing, and even though the pieces around him might not be All-Star quality or even great, he's making that team look elite. Spencer Dinwiddie has been really, really good, and he looks like a good running mate for, for Luka. So him being at number seven, it falls into my range, so I'm okay with that. Um, and he's not even 25, which is the craziest thing. LeBron at number six. Okay, so this is what they said. The This is the lowest that LeBron has been um, in his career since, I think they said, 17, 18. He's averaging 29, 8, and 6, a block a game. Um, he's in conversation for for um, scoring title. I'm very curious. I'm actually going to read this one right now and, and see why they have him at number six. They don't really say anything negative in here um, about his fall, but maybe LeBron's fall, in their opinion, LeBron's fall is not to do with himself, but to do with, like, Steph Curry, who I guess was number four last season, so even he fell a little bit. Um, interesting. Let me know in the comments. Again, with all this stuff, let me know what you think in the comment section. Number four is Wardell Stephen Curry, or number five is Wardell Stephen Curry. Um, this is unambiguously Steph's worst offensive season since he first won MVP in the first title. Oh, okay. He's still fifth, with that being, being, say, being said. Steph Curry's still the fifth best player in the league, according to the Ringo, with all that being said. And then they get into some advanced stats with Raptor. I don't even know what the hell that stands for, but I, I've seen it before. Oh, and then they move on to Kevin Durant. We actually not getting big write-ups on the, the lower people, but the higher people. Like, Chris Paul got four paragraphs. They said, ah, uh, 
we don't need to tell you what LeBron doing. You watch the basketball, right? We don't need to tell you what Steph Curry's doing. We give you we give you two paragraphs of Steph Curry. Everybody else getting a, a whole page, two paragraphs. You've been watching Steph Curry, right? And he's been in a, I don't want to say slump, but he ain't been as great recently. Um, and the team hasn't either. Kevin Durant at number four. Number three is Joel Embiid. Number two is going to be Giannis. And they had him at number seven last season. Oh, that's kind of wild. All right. And um, number one is Nikola Jokic. For the second year in a row, Nikola Jokic is ranked the best player in the entire league. How great is that? I'm not mad at this at all. Do I agree with everything in this list? Hell no. Hell no. But I don't think this is a absolutely terrible, everybody must be fire type list of fireable offense. I've seen those type of lists before. I've seen those type of lists before. I don't know. Again, as long as we take it with it's just basketball, none of it even matters. But it's cool to see other people's opinions. And now what I'm about to go do is go to the very top of this article again and actually read the statistics and, and the write-ups with all of these people. Shout out to the ringer um, and everybody that contributed to it. Though I don't agree with everything you said, I respect what you said. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully everybody else in the comment section does too. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like.